All right. Welcome to my little intersection of athletic science, traditional martial arts, and niche investing. In this video, I'll be discussing ORMAT, an owner operator of geothermal and solar power plants, mostly in the United States, but also globally. Uh, ORMAT sells electricity, but does not have to pay energy input costs. So I think that's a compelling proposition in an environment of rising energy costs and interest rates, as well as renewable penetration to the electric grid. For the athletic aspect, I'm continuing my work on the experimental strength training program I developed via a recent podcast on Huberman Labs. The exercises are listed here, and you can check below for the references. I'll discuss the cat stance dumbbell press specifically during this video. So I first encountered ORMAT at the 2013 Geothermal Resources Council annual meeting in Las Vegas. I drove past their Dr Brady Geothermal project in near Reno, and then did a bit of epithermal gold prospecting in the Tonopah area beforehand. Uh, epithermal being fossilized geothermal resources and in some cases geothermal resources being the future epithermal gold resources in maybe a few hundred thousand to a few million years. Uh, so while preparing this video, I reviewed the past 10 years of annual reports, the 10 Ks, and two years of quarterly. Uh, however, my commentary here comes primarily from my reading of their most recent investor presentation. So in Q1, they produced just over one gigawatt of power. 740 megawatts, or almost three quarters of that power, came from the United States, with the rest being spread across five countries. That revenue translated into $183 million during Q1, which is a 10% increase compared to Q1 of last year. 38.1% uh, margin, and out of 183 in revenue, 107 million went to EBITDA, uh, or earnings before interest tax depreciation and amortization. 88% uh, of that comes from electricity sales, uh, and then you've got products, which is helping to develop new power plants, I think, for third parties, and then storage, which is batteries and energy storage, which uh, they are, as I understand, selling to third parties. They've got a development pipeline of nine geothermal projects, six solar projects, and eight energy storage projects, which all together come out to about a 40% increase in their power generation. So how's their ability to finance these projects in a potentially rising interest rate environment? They report that 98% of their debt is at a fixed interest rate of around 4.5%. They've got, in terms of repayments, they've got 256 million repayment coming up in Q3 till 2026, all of their repayments are smaller than that 256 for the entire year going forward. And everything is locked in at 4%. So uh, how, how are they for the repayment? With 500 million in current assets, uh, 180 of that in cash, it would appear as though they have the liquidity to carry through going forward. With all of it on fixed rate, they, they're not exposed to interest price rates uh, going up. So that, that all looks very bullish from that perspective. So does that make Ormat a buy? Well, to start, if you're the type who would buy a stock because of a 10-minute video on YouTube, then first thing you ought to do is learn to control your shiny object impulse, as I discovered uh, however many years ago now. Uh, individual stock decisions are highly personal and it's well advised to work with a certified advisor when considering a certain stock and or investing strategy. Needless to say, this is not investment advice. With that being said, I'll still try to make some helpful comments, starting with a comparison of earnings and dividends and comparison to some of the industry peers. So as of today, June 15th, Yahoo reports a 12 trailing month price to earnings ratio of 64 and a dividend yield of 0.63% for ORMAT. Uh, it dropped to around 50% during the 2008 crash. That's the price, I mean, uh, and has been on a pretty consistent growth track since then. It hasn't dropped very much and it hasn't dropped below its long term support level uh, since the crash has started. Um, so this is more expensive than oil producers, such as Chevron, a company that has invested into geothermal industry and assets at different times in the past. That's why I'm kind of looking at them. Besides past ventures in the Philippines and Indonesia, 
Last year, they did invest into a small Albertan company called Evers Technologies, who's running a pilot project for a new form of geothermal drilling technology. Chevron's PE and dividend yield are 15.7 and 3.39% uh, respectively right now. So that would generally be, be viewed as attractive, definitely cheaper than Ormat. Uh, another company is NRG Energy, which operates just about every kind of power plant you could think of. A NRG's PE and yield today are a mere 2.4 and a 3.55% dividend yield. So that is low. Uh, valuations this low suggest some possible balance sheet issues that are making investors concerned. Maybe they'll have to get rid of some power plants or something like that. I don't know. I haven't looked at it. Uh, I'm just surprised to see a price to earnings ratio this low for an energy company right now. Uh, but finally, we can compare to PG&E, Pacific Gas and Electric, who actually filed for bankruptcy in 2019. And when I tried to check out their website today to see an updated list of facilities which are operating, I couldn't get on their website. Uh, so that's interesting. And you check their PE ratio and dividend yield, no dividend, and it's an 81.6 price to earnings ratio. So they're actually more expensive than Ormat and don't pay a dividend. So I, I'm definitely going to hold off on saying that uh, Ormat is cheap or in uh, going to weather this storm well. Uh, but I was very happy not having looked at this company in many years. I'm very glad to see one of the cornerstones of the geothermal industry uh, looking strong at this time. So yeah, that's, that's all I have to say about that. Uh, please do your own research if you want to follow up on any of the items mentioned. Okay, so onto the Cat Stance Dumbbell Press. So this is a completely customized exercise. Um, I'm not taking any resources uh, from this. I'm kind of crafting the form and technique as I go um, and trying to get feedback from physiotherapists and athletic scientists where I can. I want to start out by just giving my basic rationale and theory that I'm coming from when, when using this exercise. Um, so if you look at uh, Jack Ripito's second edition of Starting Strength, I don't know if it's in later editions as well, but he has a comment in there when explaining why strength is worth working on. And he says, it seems rather obvious that an athlete with a 500 pound squat has a more stable core than the same athlete with a 200 pound squat. Um, so it seems to me that that principle can and should be applied more broadly. And if we look specifically to the cat stance, cat stance shows up in all sorts of katas in karate. Um, but I'm going to just focus on seisan because uh, seisan is used across a lot of Okinawan styles. And uh, even if you're not familiar with it, uh, it's easy to check videos. Seisan, S-E-I-S-A-N kata. Uh, so in Seisan, cat stance gets used uh, once towards the end, and it's used as a defensive stance. You start from a, from a punch, and then you pull back to a cat stance, and then you're going to deliver a middle block while holding the cat stance before delivering an effective response to your attacker. Of course, we practice self-defense as karateka. We do not use this to initiate combat ourselves. You'll notice that I don't successfully lift the weight in this last set. I often find a difficult trade-off between trying a weight that I can't yet do and doing a set that I can do with proper form. I did get some professional feedback that comp compromising form in this exercise may lead to placing the back into in injury-prone positions. So I'm trying to stay aware of that. And that's why I continue to keep this as labeled as an experimental workout because I'm still uh, working through the kinks and discussing proper form and back positioning. Only time will tell what kind of results it gives. Generally speaking, having a strong core uh, helps you in all endeavors of your life when it comes to injury prevention and training, but you just do have to be careful. So thanks a lot for watching and listening. Feel free to subscribe or like or however you might want to uh, keep posted for more episodes like this that I do in the future. Thanks a lot. Take care.